What's up everybody? Welcome back to another episode of Road Patina. Today on the show we are going to continue working on the Subaru with this gigantic intake system from RCM, Roger Clark Motorsports. We are also going to install a new tile, teal, wastegate because the other one was completely destroyed. More on that later. And I'm going to also install this jacking plate, thanks to a viewer, I didn't even know it was missing on the subframe. Let's get started. I did not want to have to spend any more money on the Subaru, especially on the external wastegate, but I had no choice. After talking with Tile quite a few times and sending them videos of the old wastegate, it was hammered, absolutely destroyed. The diaphragm, the, the springs, the shaft, everything except this main body here was completely destroyed, out of round, warped, leaking, not holding boost. So I had to get a brand new external wastegate. It's a pretty item, absolutely. You can run coolant in here to keep it cool if you need to. Um, this is the MVR 44 millimeter, made in the USA. Um, big thanks to Tile, they got this to me right away. Even though in the national back order, they had one with a little scratch that they gave me a nice discount on and I got it within a week. The only thing I gotta do now is install the firing and then install it on the car. Aside from the wastegate, it's going to come with all the fittings you need as well. Uh, the vacuum lines, these are to block off and attach coolant lines if you choose to run coolant through the actual wastegate. We have some V-band clamps and fittings. Um, and what I really like about this is it comes with basically all the springs that we're going to need. So, after talking to my tuner, I checked the chart here. He says I need between 10 and 12 PSI of spring pressure. So I have two different options right here is 10.15 or I have the 11.6. I think I'm going to go with the smaller spring pressure and run a black and red spring, which are right here painted black and red. Now we just got to um, pull off the couple of um, Allen head keys and put the springs in. It just goes right down here and past the turbo right here up against the up pipe just like that not too bad now all we have to do is put the dump tube screamer pipe on and that one goes just down here right there now all we have to do is figure out the fittings and put the down pipe on down pipe is on the external wastegate is on down there. Just have to route the vacuum hoses to the electronics boost controller. And since we're here, might as well put on this little turbo blanket I picked up. Blanket and some ties. That's about it. External wastegate is installed, the exhaust system, intercooler, everything is installed. We're gonna wait on the intake because I wanna get this thing running first because it's been several months. I don't even wanna admit how long it's been since the Subaru has been running. So I have to prime the oil system because it's a brand new pump. On the last video, you probably saw me disassemble the back of the oil pump, fill it full of assembly lube. Now I took the spark plugs out, oil filters off, the coils are out, and the injectors are unplugged. And this is gonna let the engine crank at a faster rate than if there was compression in it with the spark plugs in. So hopefully I'll crank it, crank it, crank it, give it a break, wait for the oil to come out of where the oil filter was. Then I'm gonna put the oil filter back on, crank it, crank it, crank it, wait to see the oil coming out of the top of the turbo where the inlet is because that is the last part of the oiling system before it goes into the engine. So if it's getting oil all the way there, then I know we're good. We'll reinstall the line and get it fired up. We've got coolant sitting in the jug behind us. I don't know, I'm a little nervous, so keep your fingers crossed. <laughs> now.
Now that we have oil at the oil filter, the oil filter is back on, and we're gonna come up here to the turbo here. So that is the stainless steel line that the oil goes through and then into the turbo and then it returns back into the block. So if oil is coming out here, we know that it's going through the entire system um, and it's recirculating back into the block. So we just gotta crack that nut off and make sure oil comes out. I have the oil feed line going right here into this glove just to make sure it doesn't shoot all over the car. I don't know if it's gonna work, but we're gonna give it a shot. Leave the oil filter dry. Don't fill it up because that makes it hard to pump the fluid through if it has full if it's full of oil. That little finger down there. It's full of oil. All right, we're done priming the system now for the moment of truth. Put this back together, put the split plugs back in it, and we'll see if it runs. I wanted to bring something else up. If you have an oil pressure gauge, and a lot of these clusters will have an oil pressure light on, just because that light goes off, or your gauge is reading that there is oil pressure, doesn't necessarily mean that there is oil pressure. It could be air pressure in the system, so you have to be careful. That's why I'm manually checking under the hood at the turbo return line to make sure oil is actually going through the entire system. Don't trust the gauge, don't trust the light. You really need to visually check to make sure the oil is coming out of the engine bay. There is more professional way to do it. There's a canister that you can pressurize with oil and air. A lot of shops have it that will actually pump and pressurize the whole entire system. Um, that's more of a professional level, not something most people have in their garage. So the way I showed you is probably the easiest, most efficient way to do it without the professional tools. Moment of truth. Keep your fingers crossed. Send your hopes, dreams, and prayers because I'll need them. Jack pad is installed. There's a nut and a bolt on the front and then just two bolts on the back. There is an STI, um, additional cross member support that you can put in. It's like a big V, but you have to have the extra mounting tabs on both sides of the cross member in the back. This doesn't have it, so we're not gonna run it. I believe this is probably just a WRX cross member. There are some large items that need to go into a small bit of real estate right here. They're gonna have to be trimmed down. Obviously that can't be trimmed down. This will probably have to be trimmed down along with this coupler. Um, this is actually gonna go into the turbo inlet. I will cut it down because the black one is gonna go over the outside of this and these are actually pretty pliable. So this needs to go in there for some support. Here we have air oil separator lines that I had to route out of the way and around because if it went straight in the hood wouldn't close so I had to use some 90 degree elbows to fit those coolant lines these can all be routed out of the way pretty easily or extended or shortened these ones are the hard part um, we have the steel braided line that goes to the power steering pump and the reservoir line that this little hose down here snakes down so these are kind of in the way um, I might be able to unbolt it and reroute it. We're just gonna have to try and we're gonna have to start cutting because this is not going to install itself. You may have noticed a little bit of smoke coming out of the engine bay on the first startup and it looks like it was just residual oil from having the valve cover the front timing cover, the oil pump off, leaking onto the header and burning off. I think we're okay there. We do have an appointment set for the Subaru to get on the dyno, so stay tuned. Next video should be on the dyno, putting down some power, seeing how it goes. The appointment's a little further out than I would have liked because of COVID. That's just how it goes right now. 
I do have new wheels and tires going on the Subaru. I'm really excited to show you those. I'm also excited to show you the new garage. We're not in the teeny tiny garage anymore. And there's some tons of videos. So please subscribe if you're new. Hit the thumbs up down below. Leave me a comment. I read them all. I try to get back to everybody. And I really appreciate all your guys' feedback. Thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.